Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Becoming podcast. Uh, we're coming to you via Zoom this time rather than live. It's a, a new medium for myself to work through uh, and with, and uh, really lucky to have a, a guest with us today, Julia, um, who will be sharing a lot of her information about what she does um, and how she's helping Pachamama, Mother Earth, and, and the world. But before we start, I'd like to have a, a call out to uh, one of my sponsors, Share at webdesignshare.com. And thank you very much, so much for all the work that uh, that you've uh, been doing for me um, with the websites and things, so the new ones. So thank you very much. Julia, hey, welcome. Um, this is Julia Contreras. I'm not sure. Hopefully I've pronounced that correctly. Yes. Great, yeah. Mm -hmm. Welcome. Um, I'm in, in, in Spain. And tell us, where are you calling and talking to us from? The big island of Hawaii. Amazing, Hawaii. isn't it? <laughs> yeah, we love this. We love this indeed. Tell us, um, what do you do? What do I do? Well, I am a shamanic practitioner. And I have a healing practice that started, oh, maybe three years ago in that vein. Before that, I had, you know, an energy healing business doing all kinds of modalities like hypnotherapy, Reiki, channeling cosmic uh, healing, uh, re reconnective healing. I've done lots and lots of training. But I started out the shamanic piece in 2001, actually, when I was working on my master's at Saybrook University and Research Center. And I was introduced in a I, part of that, I was able to take shamanic classes because my major was uh, consciousness and spirituality. And so during that time, I hooked up with my professor who taught me shamanism, and he co authored a book with Alberto Vialdo. So I've been following him and his school since then. And when they offered online, then it felt feasible that I could take the training. So I took a lot of training with him. I went around the wheel twice. I did the advanced courses and I've developed a practice that is very successful. But beyond that, I now have a partner, Cindy Chip Chase, and her and I have co-founded an academy. Um, our vision was well, we can heal and and that's great. You know, the world needs lots of healing, lots of encouragement, lots of light. But if we could teach others, then we could have a, a very positive trickle down effect on the planet, on Pachamama, on the environment, on in humanity by teaching many others to be able to operate the way we do. So that's what that's what we're doing. We established it mostly last year did a few um, classes and now we're we're in major classes we're like going forward through to November three 12 week classes and then we'll we'll have other classes after that but we're going to probably be doing this every year well, for a while fantastic and these classes that you're offering I mean it's just wonderful it, it really is are these in person or are these sort of via zoom as well or how are you it's running them uh, there's, you know, I think at some point there will probably be enough interest in Hawaii that I will do an in-person class mm -hmm. because I've worked with several people in person here and they have expressed interest. But right now we're doing the Zoom format. We have students from India, Australia, Canada, mm -hmm. the U.S., different parts of the U.S. And so we're able to be that far reaching through online classes. Right. Wow. I mean, that's that that is wonderful, and the response um, that you're getting from these people it must be really encouraging for you that you're wanting to to carry this on to move this forward. Yes, it's just been so rewarding. Um, I I would say that I worked with the vision for several months when we were creating and and establishing the academy. I even did an intuitive vision board. Uh, which is by my bed, um, and I really worked when in my meditation practice with visualization and with spirit to just bring bring it into fruition. And at one point, and and my partner did too. And at one point, I felt like I heard it's manifesting now and that's when we began and there has been incredible response from these students we love them yeah. we love working with their pathway helping them it's just so rewarding 
Yes, yeah. I'm, I'm, I, I know it is working the shamanic side, but doing the workshops is the, is the next stage up. It really yeah. is, and getting those yeah. numbers from there. Now, there's going to be a lot of people, because of the, the podcast that I'm doing, um, we're introducing a lot of people to different modalities. And, mm -hmm. of course, the shamanic energy work is as close to my heart as, as what I do. And I studied with Dr. Alberto um, in, in the Four Winds and also had teachers before that in Canada um, as well on the shamanic side. But can you explain in your words, please, what it really is that, you know, the shamanic energy medicine and, and what, it, uh, what it means to you? So it means everything to me. Um, when I first immersed myself in the OEM and took the shamanic training, I was at a place in my life where I was, I had a healing practice, but there was a, a personal crisis, which often leads us into shamanism going on within my own family. And it, it was that crisis that caused me to realize I didn't have the tools with all of my other training that I didn't have the tools, how to deal with that situation in a, in a very healing way. Uh, I felt like I was barely keeping my head above the water. And so I dove in really. I, I, I talked to, uh, an advisor, an academic advisor and, and enter the class three days later, I was ready. Jaguar came to me mm -hmm. over and over again, black Jaguar with blue eyes talking to me saying, come, come, come. And so I immersed myself. And, and so to me, it has been, I have learned so many tools, so many techniques that can help people and helped myself first. It's, it's a dual thing. You continue to go through your own transformation, your own shedding, you know, like serpent shedding the old skin, you continue to do that as part of the process. And then as then you can also work with other people. But I also um, have a support group of shamans that were in most of them were in the same OEM as me, but others before um, and one after. And we meet every two weeks and we offer support to each other and and uh, in whatever we're going through. And we also work on certain topics and teaching. So we also so I also put some energy into that. Um, am I answering your question correctly? I think so. <laughs> yes. No, no, it is. It is. So if somebody wanted to come to you, in, in, from wherever, uh, and they had a, a a situation or a problem that came up into their in their lives, and they, and they wanted to to work on that. What uh, what would you do first? What is one of the first things that 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 you would do with them? The first thing I would do with them would would be have a small short interview. Mm -hmm. Just get some basic of what's going on, not a long interview, but a short interview because. I really understand that too much information can kind of get in the way of you seeing the, the situation through like Jaguar eyes or through the, the ethereal. And so then I would explain to them what I was going to do and I would check their chakra field and see what's going on there. And I'm the whole time I'm explaining to them what I'm gonna do. I uh, usually start people off with a journey, I drum and people really love that and i love doing journeys so that's how i relax them i mm -hmm. take them on a, a journey then i work with their field after they've you know worked with one of my kuyas and blown their issue into that and I just I go from there and my I, I work with five, I'm, I guess I'm a Jaguar person. I work with five Jaguars that I've received through soul retrievals and different things. And they are my eyes. They show me what's going on in that person's field. And I've just seen miraculous, miraculous change in people's lives because it's not me. I'm just a channel. Mm -hmm. And so I'm channeling spirit and coming through the archetypes. And I've worked with a lot of ritual abuse. It's not my favorite thing to do, but I do know how to help people in that situation. And just all kinds of issues, mostly adult men and women. Before I, um, one of my training tools was I did equine assisted psychotherapy with horses when I was on the mainland before I moved here. And so I still have uh, that kind of communication with animals very deep and very sharp and strong within me. So I really work with the archetypes. Yes. The Andean shamanism, they are my guides.
Yes, 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 yeah, yeah. It's, it's so similar in so many ways with animals and then with people and that as well, the connections that we have. And this is probably why we've, we've you know, contacted each other and and, uh, and been and, and kept that sort of contact going because it is very much the, the same and how important their role is for yes. us in this area. Um, yeah. They can teach us so much. Yes. And I have, like I said, I still have one horse. He's beautiful. He's a beautiful paint horse. And he, mm -hmm. he, he and I communicate. He teaches me a lot still about yeah. grounding and keeping everything balanced and calmed down. Because I'm sort of a, um, I, had, I tend to be a little hyper. <laughs> <laughs> so, so he grounds me down a lot. Yeah, yeah, it's good to have that grounding, especially, yeah. you know, because we do. And in hyper, yeah, it's, it's funny we have, I think we have so much information we want to share and we get yes. excited about the yes. possibilities yes. from ourselves sharing, but for people taking it on board, I think that's, I, I get the same. I really do. The excitement just comes out. It just oozes. Yes. Yes, because you have you have something that can help people, but at the same time, grounding in, realizing sometimes when people come to you, they're not ready for the whole thing. They just want to look at one thing. And so it really takes tuning in to see where that person is and not overwhelming them too. But I tend to do packages of sessions when I work with people. And so they can, you know, save a little bit of money, but we can also go on a, that journey together and, and set some goals yes. and then achieve those goals yeah. yeah so the people that come to see you they are already a little bit aware of most of them yes of the most of them seem of the yeah yeah most of them that are attracted to me seem to be a little aware yes, yes. i've had some novices for sure yeah. and then i've had to, i've even worked with you know a teenage child mm -hmm. and i've had to teenage i don't want to call her a child but i've had to really kind of adjust my language and my understanding to their realm and not like expect them to come up to mine yeah. and so yeah yeah and does this affect you in any way like positive negative ways when you're working with in these with people one-on-one -on -one or even in group situation i mean how does that how does that affect you well mostly very positive you know sometimes i i leave my office here and i go back upstairs and i just feel i feel exuberant i feel very high you know feeling feeling very excited about what i'm able to channel through now sometimes when i'm working with someone that's really in in deep darkness I have to be very careful to protect myself and I have to uh, afterwards make sure that I ground and that I take some time to nurture myself and bring myself back into balance because you're entering into other worlds and I don't want to bring that back with me. No, yeah. no. Most, most, of, most of it is very, it just feels good to be used. I feel like I am answering my call for the rest of my life this is it yes. for me i yes. will do this till the day i die because it's it's who i am so yes did you find that that this some of the the, the gifts um that you have presented themselves at an early age did you find that this was something that, that came through? I mean, for myself, I remember at a very early age, information coming through to me, and I, I listened and I took heed of straight away. Was, was that the same for yourself? Well, you know, as is often the case, I came from a very intense trauma background, a lot of abuse in my home. And so I would go off by myself and I would see my guides i would see them talk to them play with them my mother used to say oh she's off with her imaginary friends again so i would say a definite yes there's always been something within me even as i was going through different traumas in my life because you know when you come from a background of trauma you tend to make trauma mistakes until you learn how not to and so even if i was going through that i always felt there was intense guidance for me i've i've been a meditator for many years and that's where i connect with that guidance but sometimes even as i'm just walking through life i i get you know hey hey um i've been sitting in meditation and seeing the 
I would say the, I don't know what you would call it, the wall open, like in the forest, like, uh, like a, um, a, see, what do they call that anyway? Yeah. And I've seen that other reality there and I, and a wormhole, I guess is what they call it. And I would, I know you don't step through that, but sometimes, the, you know, I've been given signs like that. Now, as I'm older, I would say that even though there's still excitement, I'm really a lot more calm than I used to be when I was younger. Mm -hmm. And my experience is not as visceral as it was. Mm -hmm. It's more deep grounded and deep knowledge. And I, you know, I've been training and doing lots of workshops and, and studying for years. I'm still, I'm still in that phase because we're, yeah. you know, as we write curriculum and we're doing it with the divine feminine emphasis, we really emphasize in our school, the divine feminine. In fact, it's called the divine feminine shaman Academy. That's the name of our school. So there's a, there's still a learning curve with that. I'm still studying that and putting that emphasis on what I already know. Yeah, for sure. And, and going back there about the childhood, I mean, yeah. it, we went through a stage, um, I know the people around myself as well, that um, if you started to say things like you're seeing images yeah. or, or other areas or entities where you knew what was going to happen, I mean, that was that was almost beaten out of you because that wasn't right. It wasn't uh, the Christian way in a yes. way. Yes, Christian way, yes, yes. Yes, I understand. There. And, and but now, for myself and and those around me, I'm, and you as well, I'm sure, encouraging this, encouraging viewing, and don't block it by the time that. Yes, that is really what we do within our classes too. Opening up, we do a lot of journeying, a lot of teaching, and we do fireside chats too, so that they can come in and share where they're at and what they need. And we're we're always encouraging encouraging that opening. Yes, yeah. I mean that, that's beautiful to have that openness and and that um, that safe place where yes. they can express, where they can share in a, in a yes. safe environment and in a community and a family, which you're offering, which I think is yes. I think is, is, and is as children, I'm sure you experience this too. I learned to be quiet about it. Totally. I learned. Totally. take it as part of my journey it was like i always knew it was there but don't say anything because yep. they you know my my father worked with mental health and i had a very clear awareness that i better not say anything or they may think i need help sure. yeah, exactly exactly yeah. yeah no very much very much like that so it, yeah. it is a um a growing and a moving in, in these areas i mean is there an area of expertise in the shamanic work that, that you seem to be drawn to more than others? Well, I would say right now it's definitely teaching. Mm -hmm. um, that's my passion. But as far as, and, and I do give the academy priority over even having healing sessions, that is my priority, but I still do healing sessions. I seem to work with people that are stuck really stuck um ritual abuse uh have entered into that world and can you, i can you explain that a bit more please what is ritual abuse ritual abuse is when somebody has been either ancestrally or in their current life um worked with by people that are into worshiping uh demons and you know that world that lower right. lower um aggravated world and yeah through sometimes the one of the women I worked through her parents were into it and so they were like taking her to these meetings where there was abuse horrific abuse going on and as a child she grew up watching this and and even though she was highly educated and aware there was this I would say mantle of darkness that I worked on and, re, and helped remove from her so that she could be free from that yeah. so yeah. yeah. And I, and I, and I have studied sacred shield method. I don't know if you know what that is, but yeah. that is really working with those darker energies in yeah. a very effective way. Um, they call it the Boniker method too. Right. So. Right. Yes. Yes. I have. And the teacher that I had in Canada, who was a, uh, in the shamanic work, he's also a Druid. Um, he yeah. introduced me and, and got me into that as well. That was a long time ago. And that was when I was in a clinical hypnotherapy um, I finished in LA and then moved up to Canada and trained with him for a while. So yeah, very much that side of things from there. Um, but with these things and, and the and the lifestyle you're living now, 
did you have to make many changes to to bring this into your life? Um, you know, when I first moved here, like almost 15 years ago now, I moved from California, Northern California. I had a healing practice in Northern California, and I did equine therapy with mm -hmm. a nonprofit. And when I moved here, I also opened a healing uh, business, and I did that for a while. And then it seemed like it was time for me to do, a, I still worked with healing people, but it was in my home instead right. of at an office. And it was, but there was time, there were definite times of exploration, entering into the Hawaiian culture. I took hula, I did uh, Hawaiian studies for a year with a kumu. And so I assimilated into the environment that I'm in. And that was really important too. Right. But uh, as far as starting a practice with you know shamanic healing it was quite natural for me because i've been doing it in other realms for years yes with other yeah 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 so that it wasn't a, a huge shift or huge change for you you just sort of stepped into the into this right. the role from there so um uh you're still taking um clients one-on-one -on -one when you have yes. time between your yes. class sessions definitely definitely and you, you know besides the ones that are like really kind of stuck i also love working with people that are really like they're searching i you know i love working with that energy too because a lot comes through for them when right. we work together yeah yes yeah yeah no that, that's that that is that's wonderful um if there was one thing that you'd like people to take away from this podcast about what you do, it doesn't have to be one, it could be more, what would you like them to take away? That they have a light within them. Sometimes it's kind of buried and we need to un, we need to lift off layers so that they can see. But we all have that light and spirit within us. We all have these amazing capabilities mm -hmm. to walk on the earth and connect with Pachamama and see magic and see into the ethereal. It just needs rediscovery sometimes. So that, you know, that is my main belief. And that's why. I use my life as a vehicle to help people uncover that within themselves. And sometimes it takes healing. Sometimes it just takes kind of removing stuff so they can see. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. So to move those barriers, to move that cloud away, to, to start to right. believe in right. themselves and who and what they are. And, and I'm sure, you know, you give them the tools and techniques that they can use when they're not with you. Right, exactly. Because that's, you know, when you work with people and you give them homework or soul work to help them keep their journey going, I can always tell the ones that are doing it and the ones that aren't because the ones that are doing it are, you can see the progress. You can see the transformation right when they come back, even the next time. And it's, it's quite amazing. Yes. But I just... I know a lot of people feel like humanity is very dark right now, and and it is. You know, mm -hmm. I know Alberto just did a workshop on uh, another wave of Pachacuti coming in that the Quiero shaman told him to share, and but it was like the darkness is evident, but so is the light, yes. and that's what I want to be able to show people is how to operate in that light, in that, and to walk away from that hopelessness and that feeling of what's going on here. Not that. We're you know not that we don't need to be aware but i i truly believe that if we are contributing to the light then that's going to grow if we give our energy too much to the other side that's going to grow yes. yes yes the old story of feeding whatever wolf comes to the, yes. to the door is yes. one that's going exactly. to win, which is always yeah. a nice story in that as yes. well um no this is fantastic and really thank you thank you so much for, for coming on and, and sharing um all the information that that you have i have your contact details which i'll put down below so you have your website your facebook and your instagram profile if there's any other way of contacting you then then let me know and i'll put that uh when i when i post this out um is there anything you'd like to say just to to finish off with just just that I'm I'm very grateful to you, Jamie, for having me and allowing me to share some of uh, what's been poured into me, let it pour out. And I I just I just want to offer myself to whoever needs that assistance, whether it's in teaching 
or in healing or just, you know, being able to have somebody you can relate to. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. no, that's, that's beautiful. And then thank you so much for that because that is so important that we are out there um, and there's other modalities out yes. there. That we know how powerful this the shamanic yes. medicine really is. and, and, and Yes, it's very that. powerful. I felt like when I first started studying it, oh, this is what's been missing. Yes. So, yes. I mean, I delved into all these different modalities and trained in so many different areas, and yet there always seemed to be like holes yes. that I could quite fill and when i went into sh shamanic training it was like oh the tools the tools you can use this you can use that and it yeah. works <laughs> yeah. so it's amazing yeah. i know and, and it really like all of my 40 plus years in the natural therapy um industry uh it brings them all together yes it brings yes them all together and the, the shamanic side there and people say well what do you do and i mean you you described it beautifully so so thank you really for that that was that was wonderful and i'd love to have you back on again to share more about your workshops in, in, uh, in, a, in a few months time or something we'll see how we go i would love that and so would my partner love to come she had had an illness or she would have been with well, us today so no, we'll no, that, that's that, that's fantastic thank you and uh yeah thank you everyone for tuning in and listening to the Becoming podcast and another wonderful guest. Um, I'd like to thank Julia again. Thank you very much again for that. A big call out to my sponsor, Share at webdesignshare.com for um, helping and supporting me uh, in my uh, journey on this line as well. And uh, just like to yeah, wrap it up for now and uh, catch up with you all soon. Thanks very much. Thank you. Aho and in oh. moonlight.